Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. We are proud to offer this series with funding from the Area Agency on Aging and the United Way of Tarrant County. These programs are recorded and are made available for viewing through a YouTube channel for future use. I'm really great for that video so that I can go back and do these again. Mm -hmm. I am Martha Brown, your host for today, and it is my pleasure to introduce Emily Corbin, who is moving to heal. Emily, I want to warm up today on this chilly day. Take us away. <laughs> yes, hello. I'm looking for my picture of you all. Um, surprise! Okay, <laughs> there you are. Hello. Um, I'm still getting the for some reason, music signal not connecting, but I have you on this connection. So that's fantastic. And that's what matters the most. I'm really happy to see you this morning. And um, yeah, we can warm up our bodies. Um, and, you know, we were talking about a couple of minutes ago, um, how just thinking about moving the body a certain way actually exercises the part of the brain that would move that part of the body. Um, it sounds obvious and also magical to say it out loud. And um, so I think in the beginning of our practice, let's work with that. Let's work with um, the idea that we can be in stillness and just give thought and attention to wiggling the toes and wiggling the fingers. And then we'll start to grow from those movements into bigger ones, okay? So as usual, come to the edge of your seat and take your feet to the floor, bare feet, fantastic um, for your nervous system, helps you to ground down and Build your energy from the floor up. And then get nice and tall through your spine. Yeah. So what does that mean? Well, it kind of means noticing the opposite of nice and tall, right? Some of that is slumped over like this. And some of it is maybe the belly is pushing out, right? There's a lot of pressure in different parts of the spine that way. So then I kind of move in both directions in order to find the middle. And then sometimes right here, I just raise my eyebrows a little bit. And then just that kind of surprise look helps you to lift a little more in the back of the neck and get a little bit taller. Yeah, and then allow your face to relax from that surprise. And then just lift the corners of your mouth for a moment before we, right there, right there, yeah, before we begin. All right, and then soften that back down. Yeah. All right. So just feel your two feet on the floor. I'm going to work with uh, getting us some tune. And it looks like it's magically going to work. Sure am hopeful. Yay. I don't know. <laughs> well, don't you hate technology sometimes? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. Well, I've got another playlist that I believe should be on the device. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, I don't know why I have internet for one thing and not the other. It's very strange and I've never seen that before. So, as we're waiting for our cue to begin, we can notice our two feet on the ground. You can close your eyes so that the information that your brain is processing is really coming from the inside, right? And then as you're sensing your two feet on the ground, you're taking some slow breaths in and out. And soften your body as you're seated upright. So 
I don't know. Let's work with what we have. Okay. Maybe the quiet is all the music that we need. And so what does it mean to soften the body as we're sitting upright and alert, right? It's this balance between relaxed, alert, and waiting, right? And if we take the first letters and make ourselves a little reminder word, it's raw. When we're raw, we're ready. We're prepared to step in to whatever it is. So relaxed, alert, and waiting. We breathe in and the body is soft enough to move and shift a little bit as we breathe in. The natural movement of the spine is to round as we breathe in or sometimes lift as we breathe in, depending on the shape our body is making at that time. Yeah, so allow yourself to notice just how the body wants to move with the breath in and out. And it's nice because we can hear our breath now. And we want to place some emphasis on that sound that the breath makes. It's like the ocean, right? So with the inhale, there's this engaged quality to the back of your throat. And same with the exhale. So it's in through the nose and out through the nose. And this activation in the back of your throat, some people call it a constriction, but I think it's really more of an awakeness, uh, an aliveness to you're breathing in the back of your throat. And so when you breathe this way, continue, there is a balancing quality, right? The inhale breath is cooling to the body and the exhale breath has a counterbalancing warmth. So now playing with that idea of moving a body part without actually moving it, just knowing in your mind that it's happening, right? So can you wiggle your fingers without moving your fingers? It helps if your eyes are closed and then stop moving your fingers, be still, take a breath. And then wiggle your toes without moving a muscle. So it's like you're picturing yourself moving this way. Nice. And then pause and breathe. Nice. Keep breathing. As you're ready, we're going to imagine lifting up one foot, just lifting it off the floor. So can you visualize yourself lifting one foot off the floor and then carefully placing it back down? Nice. So the other foot now. And if you need to, you might even lift the foot up and then put it back down again, literally. And then notice the difference or pay attention to what you sense in your body and then imagine yourself doing that without actually lifting the foot. 
Nice. And now we'll lift the foot, right? So lift one foot, keep your foot nice and strong. So I'm pushing the ball of my foot down without raising onto tippy toes, right? The whole foot is engaged. All the muscles of the foot are engaged. And then relax the foot back down to the floor. Good. We'll do that with the other foot. Yeah, so I am just letting you guys start on whichever foot you want and then move to the other foot. Lift it completely off the floor. Notice the muscles in your core body that support you as you lift the foot off the floor. And then keeping that foot really engaged so all of the muscles that help you to do that all the way up your entire leg are awake and alive. And we know the neural pathways in the brain that help you to do that are awake and firing, right? And then take that foot back to the floor. Nice. So then taking your two hands to the outer edges of your seat and just allow yourself to feel the stability of that and see if you did slump a little bit in your core body, see if you can get even taller, kind of like your scooting to the edge of your seat to say, teacher, teacher, pick me, right? And then from there, imagine lifting up both of the feet without lifting them, right? Let me scoop back so you can see my feet a little better. So I'm closing the eyes and visualizing. Lifting the feet up and holding them, breathing and then exhaling to place the feet back down, right? Okay, now let's actually lift the legs off the floor. Okay, so the feet lift. Wow, the whole body has to activate and engage in order to keep us upright. We can hold on to the edges of the chair for more stability. And then use your next out breath, your next exhale to take your feet back to the floor. And then relax once your feet get to the floor, soften, take a little jiggle, little wiggle, right? Little wiggle in your seat and a deeper breath. Okay. So, We'll work with those wiggling fingers, the creepy crawler finger, yeah. And this sort of reaching down and out and up and then bringing that movement back down again. Nice. Same thing, same side. Keep wiggling the fingers as you're making this bigger, broader movement with the entire arm and engaging the belly and the chest for your core stability, right? Feel your two feet on the ground, pushing against the ground to keep you from falling forward, ah, right? So keep going. Wiggle the fingers as we bring them down. Nice. One more like this. Nice and slow. And then just let your arm hang. Sense what's different about this right arm and the left. There's no right or wrong answer or nothing that you have to feel, right? Just sensing what's different. Nice. And then let's move to the other side. So finding that creepy crawler movement with your fingers first, and then reaching down, bringing that creepy crawler movement out in front of the body, way up and back down in front of the face and to our starting place. We'll do it again. Our inhale breath is happening as we're reaching down and then back up again. And then our exhale breath, as we pull Pull the arm back down, almost like we're pulling a heavy weight and wiggling the fingers at the same time. That's when the exhale breath is happening. Keep going in your own timing. Yes. So if your left hand is your non-dominant hand, 
then this will be more challenging on this side. Yeah. Been working on brushing my teeth with my left hand lately. And it is one of the hardest things I've ever tried to do, right? <laughs> and that tells me that I really need to do it <laughs> because it's going to make me better at other things that are also difficult. Yeah, I keep going one more time. <laughs> I find that putting my pants on with the other foot first is difficult as well. Yes, and you know what? practice it. I was listening. We're going to do both hands now. So reaching down and up. Yeah. And I was listening to this really great neuroscientist recently, and he was talking about one of the best ways. Keep going. And we're doing it right now, right? We are multitasking in a way that is challenging our brains because you're listening to me tell a story that's different from what we're doing, right? And we're ignoring the phone. <laughs> and that's life. So David Eagleman, keep going. David Eagleman, was talking about how challenging yourself to do things with your non-dominant hand is one of the ways that you can keep neuroplasticity and build neuroplasticity. Nice, this is our last one. Relax your fingers down and just notice the difference. All right, so do you feel any sensations in your forearm? Yeah, do you um, feel that sensation moving up the backs of the arms, right? It's so strong. cool that moving your pinky finger engages the tricep, right? And just thinking about moving the pinky finger actually engages <laughs> the part of the brain that moves your tricep. So if you wanna get a good tricep workout, but you're not, super interested in doing triceps today. <laughs> Just think about, or even move your pinky, right? Yes, that's awesome. Yeah. Good stuff, nice. We're gonna take feet to the floor and just point the toes and bring the foot down again. So lifting one foot, pointing the toes, feeling that extension from the hip joint all the way to the tip of your toes and then taking the foot back down again. So each inhale breath, lifting the leg, feeling the full extension from hip to toe and exhale, take the foot back down again. And you don't have to lift your leg high. What's important is that you are very present and aware of the movement, right? Like almost like you're moving through water as far as the speed. Nice, keep going. One more with each side, lifting and placing the whole foot on the floor, yep. I think I did two more each side. <laughs> and then taking both feet back to the floor again. Just a moment of pausing. And notice where you sent activation in the muscles and the tissues of your legs, right? It's a little more subtle because we weren't moving all of the toes individually, right? Nice. So with our next inhale breath, we're moving back into the upper body, reaching the arms out and up. So reach way out, yes. And then all the way up, spread all of the fingers, interlace your hands above your head. Yeah, and so which hand, which thumb is on top? Just notice it, yeah. And then uncross your hands, and cross the other thumb on top. 
Nice. Your next exhale breath, you're gonna separate your hands, palms face down as you reach out, reach the fingers. When we get to this point, this is your eagle wingspan. Your fingers, the tips of your middle fingers are as far away as they can get right now. Yes, and then exhale, reach all the way down, keep going. Nice, we're gonna do that a few more times. So the palms go up, the fingers are spread, really like you've got webs between your fingers and you're slicing, moving yourself through water. Yeah. And then when you get to the top, reach even higher without letting your shoulders come into your ears. So I'll demonstrate shoulders in the ears. It's gonna feel later on like whiplash, right? So we don't want whiplash. Let's bring the shoulders out of the ears. Exhale to bring your palms out and down. Oh, there's that spot where I get to expand my wings even more and then lower all the way down. One more like that, so keep going. The inhale, reaching, 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 little bit taller, shoulders out of the ears. I have to remind myself to exhale, take the arms out, find your length in your wingspan, and then lower the arms back down. Good. And now relax all of your fingers. Let your arms hang by your side and just kind of move the bigger bones of your arms. Kind of, yeah, heavy bone movement here. Nice. And then let your arms just hang in stillness. Close your eyes and pay attention to what you sense from the tips of your fingers all the way up, 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 and even into the back of your neck and the base of your skull. So some of the muscles that we're working when we're moving the fingers and stretching them away from each other like that, we're engaging things that are connected at the base of the occipital bone, which is really cool because you can move your fingers and work that place. Nice. With our next exhale breath, palms to the thighs, we're just going to tuck the chin to the chest. Let your inhale breath be reaching the chin back through the middle and all the way up. So now we're really trying to spread out the front of the neck and get as much space with that next exhale from the chest plate to the tip of your chin without closing the back of the neck. So I'm gonna move slowly and speak while I'm moving and you go ahead and keep moving with your own breath time. So right now I'm moving faster than I would like for you to move just to demonstrate, right? And then I'll slow it down. I'm using my inhale now to reach the chin up. Notice that expansion, how the chest lifts, and then exhale here as you reach your chest, your chin towards your chest, rather. Feel the space in the back of your neck. Feel the space when you lift your chin, feel the space in the front, in your throat. When you tuck, feel the space in the back of the neck. And then completing the breath that you're on and moving your head and your neck back to the center. Yeah, okay. So with us being able to, to talk, here, we can practice some of the Nia moving to heal work um, in a different way, right? We can kind of break down some of these movements and these terms that you hear me saying every class, right? Um, one of them is um, upward block, right? And you see me doing this and you 
magically because of mirror neurons, you do it as well. But let's talk about what's actually happening. So I'm sitting nice and tall. I've got my arms in the ready position. So it's a loose fist with the thumb on the outside of the fingers. Yeah. And then I'm not locked there, but I'm activated, you know? And then from there, bringing one arm up and the forearm turns out. Yeah. And then bring that arm back to ready. And the other arm comes up and rotates. Beautiful thing about this radius bone in our arms is that it rotates. Lift, yes. And so we work with this. Usually we've got some kind of cool beat going, yeah? Or maybe we have something that's much softer. And when we have something much softer and slower, we can do that same movement. We just give it a different energy, right? And this is so wonderful because we can customize our experience to the music that we are hearing or just to what we want from it, right? Nice, let's bring the arms back to ready. Good. So from here, let's practice a punch. So if all of your power, this is why the ready position matters. If all of the power in your body is coming from the middle of you, the core of you, then you want to gather that energy towards the core and then utilize it. So I am pulling back one arm as I'm pushing with energy and punching with the other arm, right? And it just ends up looking like this when we're dancing. Yeah, but it's a martial art. Yeah. And when I activate my breath and, and move the body with the breath, I'm using the power so much more efficiently because then the breath is moving in unison with the exertion of power, right? Nice, nice. Now, what if we brought a softer energy to that, right? So we still are doing this punch, but make it casual, right? <laughs> casual punching, kind of like casual Friday, not quite, yeah, good. And now come back to center, nice. So let's take a block now, or a, I'm sorry, a, um, I've lost the word. We're gonna take heel of the hand, yeah. And push, so bringing the fingertips in, yeah. And then pushing heel of the hand down. This is called a strike. Thank you words for coming to me. And so you see that when I lift my arm up, I'm almost gathering energy as I do that. That's sort of where my inhale is happening. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> and we do these things. We keep the upper arm close to the body. Yeah. <sighs> Especially as you're learning these movements keep the upper arm close to the body. That way you don't risk any kind of shoulder injury or um, you're not allowing the joints to become vulnerable, right? If you had armor on or you were in a martial art battle, you would be avoiding keeping things like your rib cage and your belly open to the person that you're engaged with, right? So there's, all, there's a practical reason for all of it. And it's really cool that the body has evolved to move this way. Nice. And then once you get more comfortable, right, with the movement, then you can work on making it a little bigger, 
Yeah. Nice. So let's practice that strike. What happens when you strike out and then bring it back in? Let's do that in slow motion, okay? And then bring it back in. Other side. What if I add in that ujjayi that I didn't say the word for it earlier, but when we make that ocean sound with the breath, yeah, that's the ujjayi sound. Yes. Yes. So you hear a lot of grunting in martial arts, and this is why. <laughs> Aligning breath with power and movement. Yes, nice. So let's soften the hands now. Whenever we have been doing a firm, um, strong kind of Taekwondo type movement, we try to balance it with a very Tai Chi energy in Nia, right? And then Tai Chi energy is very flowy and it's slow, it's deliberate. It's almost like moving in water. Right? And you're also utilizing this idea of holding a ball of energy, otherwise known as chi, right? And moving in such a way that you can continuously hold on to that ball of energy without spilling it, right? Because it's like your power source. Nice. And then getting curious in the space, can you open up one side of the body as you move it, right? And if someone were to come at you as you were opening that side of the body, then there would be this magical shift into that direction to protect. Nice. Good. So those are the two extremes, those sharp movements more Taekwondo and the softer, more fluid movements are generally what we associate with Tai Chi. And in between, you have Aikido. And Aikido is all about spiraling, right? All about when your opponent, in the case of martial arts, comes with a strong, firm energy from above, you would respond with the opposite energy from below. And so what you get is this gorgeous sort of spiraling. If you came and tried to push me, you wouldn't be able to push me because I would already move that way, right? And then you would end up with this gorgeous dance of energies. I don't know if you can tell, but Aikido is one of my favorite ways of using this energy because it's a little bit Goldilocks to me. Yeah, the best of both worlds. <laughs> nice. And then come back to that starting place. So this is our ready relax with the hands on the thighs. Yeah. And now what would it be like to move our feet with these same energies, right? So, right, might look like a kick with that Taekwondo energy, right? And the Tai Chi energy would be very And neither is superior to the other. They are both essential to your balanced body, right? So let's practice. You can do this from your chair. You could also stand up, but do what feels safe and comfortable to you, right? So if you want to practice agility in this very Tai Chi-like way, you can just sit in your chair and sweep your knee over. We've done knee sweeps together. The foot is really engaged and active, 
Yeah. And there's this gentle, if you point your middle fingers down, you can sort of get a little bit more balanced, like holding, uh, like when a tightrope walker is holding that wobbling, um, what do they call it? A pole, I guess. Yeah. Your middle fingers are like your balancing rods here. Good. And then relax the foot back down. Good. Now, if I'm standing, it might look like this, just foot on the floor with the toes touching, or I might be way up here and playing with my foot moving in the space. And then if you're seated, you can move to the other side. Inhale, lift the opposite foot. Yeah, find your balanced fingers. Yeah, nice. Good, couple more times. And then let's move side to side. Nice. And find stillness in the middle. Good, nice. So I hope you can see that there are these different energies that you can move to this foundation of Nia moving to heel, right? There are 52 of these foundational movements. Um, the creepy crawlers are one of them. Uh, the whole foot planting down on the floor as opposed to the toes or the ball of the foot or the heel. Those are all different Nia movements. And we bring different energies to them with the martial arts that I explained. And next time, let's talk about the dance arts um, because that's the other element of this um, that also makes it a never the same way twice kind of experience. Um, and one of the reasons why I love it so much. Um, let's come back to our seat. Just take a little eyes closed movement of your spine, relax your head and your neck. Let your ears reach towards one shoulder and soften that shoulder down. Use an inhale to move your head back through the neutral space of the center. And then let your opposite ear fall towards your opposite shoulder, relaxing both shoulders down. Nice and then bringing your chin back to neutral when you're ready. Let's lift the right leg off the floor, cross it over like you're sitting with your legs crossed under a table. Nice, keep that left foot firmly planted, get longer through your spine. Soften your jaw. So if you're not sure if your jaw is soft or not, open your mouth really wide, ah and then close it really tight and then relax into the middle. Good. With your next exhale, you're just gonna allow yourself to hinge forward just a touch. And breathe here, noticing that, that stretch in your outer hip. When you're ready, inhale as you come back up to neutral and exhale to take your right foot to the floor. We'll inhale to lift up the left leg and exhale to cross it over, just like you're sitting with your legs crossed under a table. Get nice and tall, press your right foot into the ground and get nice and tall through your spine. Yeah, keep that left foot activated and then use your next exhale to just hinge forward a little bit, stay nice and long in your spine. Keep your feet really pressing into the ground. So you feel as you hinge forward, you're maximizing this stretch that you're feeling on the outside of your left hip, glutes and thigh, outer edge here of the left, primarily in the hip area. Exhaling just a touch deeper and then inhaling to come back 
tall spine, exhaling to uncross the feet and take them to the floor. Okay. Little wiggle of your shoulders here, little shaking out of the wrists. Yeah. And then creepy crawler fingers. We take, not creepy, sorry. Uh, <laughs> There you go. Finger flick. I don't know if you guys can hear that sound. Yeah. So flick your fingers right by your ears. Just listen to that sound. Okay. All of the fingers hide behind the thumb and then they flick. Like one explosive motion. Nice. Okay. And then relax the hands down. You just learned another knee move. So let's inhale as we bring our palms up. Exhale, they reach out to the sides. Palms reach down as well. Soften your elbows. Yeah, so before we had our arms all the way out, reaching as far away as we could get. And now we're not quite doing that. We're softening the elbows, bringing them down like bull posts or angel wings coming down. One more like that. <sighs> nice. And now we're ready to clear the space. So reaching down and then grab onto whatever you need to clear out and <sighs> let it go. Nice. Let's do it again. <sighs> Letting it go. One more time. <sighs> now we're ready. Thank you, thank you. I'm so happy that we had the opportunity to do things differently today. Um, what a gift it is to sometimes um, get sidetracked, right? And throw the plan out the window, it's actually quite beautiful. So here's to us all being adaptable as we move into our daily life. Thank you, friends. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. You certainly make the day better. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Thanks, even, guys. even the muscles in the in my back feel like they've been exercised, and I hope you meant for that. Absolutely, they have been. They mm -hmm. they definitely have been. Um, you know, we 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 say it all the time, and we maybe we say it so much that we don't really acknowledge it's important that it's all connected. <laughs> Um, and it really is all connected. Um, and Just like so, it's connected to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You raise an arm, we raise an arm. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> yes. And our, our actions and, you know, our behaviors um, impact the behavior of the person across the screen. It's a great metaphor for all kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question right here in public. Do you sure is your hope to stay with us every Thursday? Absolutely. I well, would you. really thank you very much. Would really hope to. Yay. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're planning for spring. My supervisor's looking at our spring calendar and um, she asked me if she could plug you in on Thursdays. And I said, I certainly hope so. So let's ask Emily. I sure hope so too. Okay. Well, we will plug you in. Well, hey, Emily, can I ask a question? Absolutely. Always. When, when we were talking about moving with your mind and not moving your body, is that like phantom pain on people that have lost a limb? Is it similar um, to that? It is. I mean, it is touching on some of that same research as far as what we understand about um, the brain uh, and you know sometimes when um, folks who have a phantom limb situation will um, will work with a mirror and because a mirror allows you to move let's say that they are missing their left limb and they stand in front of the mirror and work the right and and look at it, really focus your attention on working the right, the brain receives that as being the left arm, right? Um, and so I'm, 
I don't want to oversimplify and suggest that would just automatically relieve whatever it is they're experiencing. Right. But it right. does, you know, it does point to what we are learning more and more that um, even the perception of something to the brain is enough for it to be a reality in the body in a lot of right. ways. Right. Um, okay, thank and, you. And so, yes, yeah. it's totally related. Yep. Interesting. Uh, I hurt my ankle and I was told to practice moving the other ankle in front mm. of a mirror. And uh, it was incredibly helpful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and also a hard thing to make yourself do, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough to Thanks do. for that question. <laughs> Anybody else have any parting shots before we take a look at tomorrow? Oh. Okay, Emily, let's Thank see. You, what's Emily. Up. Yes, ma'am. There's Emily. Thank Good you. Day. Tomorrow is harp and cello. It's probably the Harlos duo, if I was guessing, and I hope it is. They always explain the music and then play for us, and it feels good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hans, are you having a good day? Yes. Good. Wonderful. What are you going to do special for yourself today? Yet yeah, will tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love so your. It music. sounds like it sounds Honest. like you're going to stay out of trouble. Yes, Myra, what's on your plate for today? Haircut. Oh, good for that always feels so good when you walk out and you spent yeah. money on yourself. That's right. Awesome. Awesome. And Don, you're going to appreciate that haircut, aren't you? I am absolutely going to appreciate that haircut. <laughs> I was thinking about her getting a haircut while I'm sitting here. So imagine my hair is growing. Of so. course it is. <laughs> and, and you're going to turn around and work with your brushes and your paints today, right? Uh, probably a little bit. I've just finished one I showed you, but uh, I'll, oh. I'm thinking about the, the next one. Would you show Emily? Sure. Oh, please. It's beautiful. Oh, yay. I'm excited. Come here, buddy. I've got someone oh, boy. yelling at the door. Come here, buddy. Come on. Come on, silly boy. <laughs> My husband blockaded them. Uh. <laughs> He's, he's officing at home today and he blockaded them out. I don't know why they're part of, they're part of the experience. Well, that's, that's right. Okay, please show me. All right. Oh, nice. Pumpkin field. Oh, I wish I could see. Okay. Are they poppies? They're pumpkins. pumpkins. Pumpkin patch. Pumpkins. Okay, I have this tiny little square on my. Yeah. Speak out loud, Don, and you'll be bigger. So. If I, if I keep talking, maybe you can see me. I don't know. Yeah, I'm hoping I can change. I think it's the way I have my, there we go, speaker view. There we go. Speaker view. Oh, so, yeah. Now I can get some of the depth on, on the pumpkin. Yeah. It's a pumpkin yeah. patch. Yes, it is a pumpkin patch. Yeah, very cool. I love that. Thank you. I can just see Linus yeah. sitting there. It is, the, it is the thought, it's the, uh, like you say, the, Essence of a pumpkin patch, I would say. So it looks <laughs> like an actual pumpkin patch, but it's kind of like the essence of it. I love the forest well, behind it. Yes. You're an impressionist. Yes. I, I'm a impressionist. Yeah. An impressionist. I'm <laughs> Don does, Emily, Don does a calendar for special people every year, and he paints 12 different pictures, oh, new ones great. every year, and gives us a calendar. Oh, I would love to get one of those calendars. We'll oh, get you on the list. How wonderful. Please do. He's, he's Please very do. special. Yes. Well, yeah. Hans, I hope you have a wonderful day doing what you're going to do. Myra, go get that haircut. And Don, take care of yourself. Adios, Excellent. Yes, Emily, see you next time. See you next time. Bye, Thanks. everybody. Bye, Bye Martha. Bye-bye. <laughs>